Before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. Today I wanted to do a little story time video about how I got to this point working with professional agency models in particular because I feel like when you start photography, you eventually come to a point where you're going to do a certain genre. So that may be landscape, you might want to do family pictures, what you want to, might want to be a wedding photographer, and some of us want to do portraits, and eventually that leads to working with professional agency models. And that's kind of the route that I took when I first started, but I had no idea how to be able to work with professional agency models. I was extremely intimidated by it. So I want to share with you guys my entire entire journey. How did I manage to do it? On top of telling you guys how I did it, I'm gonna show you guys the exact emails that I sent to these agencies and the photos that I attached in those emails for them to take a look at my work and to approve me to do test work with their models and paid work. I've worked with agencies such as Next, Elite, IMG, Wilhelmina, Ford, Factor. I've worked with so many different agencies, not only in the United States, but also overseas. With that, you'll have some inside information on how to go about contacting agencies and working with professional models. And hopefully you'll be more confident when you, when you finally decide that that's what you wanna do. I got my notes here. Let's start from the top. <laughs> I started photography August 2011. I started doing senior pictures, family pictures. Eventually I got into doing engagements and weddings. And then I slowly started to have a, have a pat grow a passion for fashion photography, passion for fashion that's I was still taking portraits on the side while I was doing a lot of client work. Um, a lot of those portraits were of freelance models in my city. So I reached out to a bunch of them. I kind of just saw who other photographers were taking pictures of and then reached out to those models. And a lot of them agreed to work with me. One of the models that I reached out to is one of my, one of my best friends. She agreed to work with me. I was super excited. Working with freelance models in my city definitely helped me prepare and also gave me images to use for my portfolio. And that was gonna be very crucial. You need to build a book before you really are able to work with agencies. So I was able to build my book, again, working with freelance models. Things were great until I went from me and the model to me, the model, hair, and makeup. And But let me tell you why. Because this added a whole new layer of th things that I was clearly not ready for. It was the first time that I kind of had to lead a team and I'm I'm more of like an introvert in that respect where it's me bossing people around and telling people what to do. Was it was it really something that I'm, I was confident in? I was more like, okay, like, yeah, great. We could do that, sounds good. Yeah, whatever you want. Being the leader of a photo shoot and, and making sure that the vision came to life was totally my responsibility and I flopped that so many times because I didn't speak up because I was too scared. I was in situations where someone from the creative team would try to overtake the entire shoe and kind of like tell me what to do. I learned a lot during that time. I was so, I was so terrified to stand up for myself and I didn't want to cause any like friction or make anybody uncomfortable. So a lot of the times I tried to diffuse it and just kind of please people, which I was never happy with those photos in the end because they weren't my vision. And sometimes the makeup didn't come out like I wanted to again. Sometimes it was like too much makeup or the hair was too much, too much hairspray. <laughs> you know, you look, but the thing is I learned so much from that. And working with a creative team made me realize you have to be extremely clear and work with people who want the same vision as you. And that was the biggest takeaway from working again with a creative team is that yes, they do hair, hair and makeup, but their style might be different than your style and what you envision. I learned the hard way that you can't just work with anybody. <laughs> That's one thing that really helped me grow is that working with different makeup artists and hairstylists, you begin to realize, okay, I like this type of makeup look. I don't like this type of hair. And this person, I don't feel like we really get along. And this person, our visions kind of match a little bit more. So you start to develop these relationships and that helps you build a creative team that you work with frequently. For me, I work. I usually work with the same like two or three makeup artists. Basically, it's people that I vibe with, 
I like their work, they like my photography, and we both benefit from it. Creative team, you know, everybody has to benefit from it if it is a test shoot. So I like to incorporate looks that makeup artists want to do. So you just got to find the makeup artist and the hairstylist that fit your style as a photographer. Everybody's different. So the reason why I mention all that is because a lot of the times my photo shoots were taken over by somebody else but I still went through with those photo shoots because I needed practice and sometimes you know once in a while the photo shoot turned out great you know we got good makeup we the hair was great and and I was able to add that image to my portfolio so I went through a lot of interesting slash bad photo shoots to get to the very few great ones that I eventually added in my portfolio on the topic of portfolios, it's extremely important to have a professional looking website where you can have all your best work to show these agents. And that leads me to the sponsor for today's video, Squarespace. They're actually the perfect sponsor for this because they have such an amazing platform that enables you to create uh, your online presence and run your business. They offer so much, especially for photographers or just creatives in general, honestly. And again, when you are reaching out to these agents, they're gonna to wanna to see a professional looking website. That's gonna be maybe the first or only impression that they have of you and you want it to look good. The reason why I love Squarespace is they have a lot of different options that you can customize your galleries, you can have different sections. For instance, as photographers, some of us do street style photography, some of us do beauty, some of us do weddings. So maybe you wanna show that work, but also have it categorized in different ways and show different agencies, different types of work. You can do that with Squarespace, it's super easy. You have a different section, you send them just that section. And also they have uh, customizable galleries. You can do carousels where the images are swapping out. You can do a slideshow, you can do before and afters, you can just show all your, you, there's different ways to customize how people see your work and I think that's extremely important, especially if you only have, again, five, 10 seconds to catch somebody's attention. You wanna have a good looking website, especially when you're working with professional agencies, then they're gonna, maybe they're gonna judge you based on just that. So good looking website is number one. On top of being just really easy to use, they have things like availability calendars where your clients can see when you're available or not. They have analytics, you can see where your traffic's coming from. You can literally start an online store. You can sell digital presets, you can sell merch, you can run a, literally run your business from your website. And if you are pitching to different agencies and maybe one of them's a little bit more edgy, you can change up the entire look of your website from their many designer templates with just a click of a button. You can even preview it before you change anything. You can try the free trial. You can try the trial. You can use a free, you could do the free trial. <laughs> you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jessica. You can use my offer code Jessica for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Honestly guys, check it out. You're gonna love it. You, you're gonna be so confident pitching to these agents with your beautiful looking website, that's all I gotta say. So get your website and let's get back to the story, shall we? <laughs> so worked with the freelance models for about two years in my city, and then early 2016, I decided I wanted to start working with professional agency models. This was a very big step for me. Again, I had been doing photography for about five years at that point, and I just decided, this is it, let's do it. Rip the band-aid off. I decided, Today is the day we're gonna reach out and possibly be rejected, but that's nothing new in my life. That sounded sad, but it's really not. Like, I'm good, I'm fine. I did a week or two of research, Googling how to contact modeling agencies, and I found this one post. I think it was like a blog post. God bless the person who, who wrote that because they really, truly helped me. They wrote out how they contacted an agency, what they did, that they, they, they said that they attached photos in the email and test shoots and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, this is like a gold mine of information. This is like a treasure chest. You know, Mario, this is like a treasure chest of information and I just found it. And now we're gonna go save Princess Peach from the castle. Hopefully Bowser's out to lunch. After I found this blog post, I felt so confident to reach out to my first agency. I was extremely nervous, don't get it twisted. I had to actually call up these people and talk to somebody that I don't even know and try to ask them to, to help to do that, to do stuff. 
So I ended up calling a few agencies. You, oh, dude, I was a mess. I literally called and my voice started shaking. I don't even know why it wasn't even like looking back. I'm like, it's not even that serious. I was so dramatic. So I called this agency. My cat is literally snoring. Is my story that boring? <laughs> Person on the phone transferred me to the agent in charge of development, new faces, and they ended up giving me their email. So I wrote it down and then I was like, okay, I got the email. We're getting somewhere. Now I just have to write the perfect email and put the pictures in there and I'm good to go. We're following the steps here from the, from the blog post. So I'll actually put up the email that I sent to the agent here. And again, this is from 2016. So long ago, I, again, I ha literally had like five images in my portfolio, so I had to choose the best two photos. And I will show you the exact photos that I sent. It's, it's, it's so funny to me that I only attached two pictures. And these were the photos that I ended up attaching to that email. And now that I'm looking back at them, I really, I really still like them. So I think that I did a good job with the photos that I chose. I think those are, that's like a good variety, but I'm curious, like why did I only attach two? Now I attach like 15. <laughs> the agent emails me back saying that they need to meet with me in person to be able to like confirm me and have me work with their models. So I planned a trip to Chicago just to meet up with this agent. And my sisters came with me and I had actually put some portfolio images in a book and I printed it out and I actually have that exact book. You can watch a video of that book, the exact book that I took with me. I'll have a link up here, here or here somewhere where you can take a look at that video. So I took this book with me, it was a printed book with my best pictures in there, showed it to this agent. Again, the, this is the first interaction with an a professional agency that I ever had. No one had ever really seen my pictures on a professional level before. So she was so like really surprised by the fact that I brought my book, like a physical book. She's like, wow, you, you know, I've never had anyone bring a physical book with them. This is amazing, like it's so pretty, I love it. And I was like, oh, they no one brings a printed book. Aren't you supposed to like have your work printed? She's like, no, they usually just have it digital or like they bring an iPad or something. So during the meeting, she just kind of asked me about myself and the photography that I do. So she took a look at my portfolio, really liked the images. She did have some critiques and she told me the biggest one would be less makeup, more natural looks. She mentioned that in some of my photos, the models were wearing a lot of makeup, heavy lipstick or eyeshadow, and the hair was too done up. She wanted something a little bit more natural, no contouring, no, she said specifically, no false lashes. That was super interesting to me because before that, I really didn't know what agencies expected in portfolios and what they want, like the looks for their girls to be. So I definitely took this and it became like my new thing. No false lashes, no contour, all that stuff. So. She gave me the green light. I went back to Michigan and with this information, I applied it to every single one of my photo shoots. And it was definitely hard and I'll tell you why. Because when I was working with creative in Michigan, they did like the contouring and lots of makeup and the false lashes. Now don't get me wrong, those are great looks, but I, I understood what the agent was looking for. And she had a point. And I, I kind of wanted to do more natural looks, but a lot of the makeup artists didn't feel like that was, like they're like, oh, like it, it's like I'm not even putting on any makeup on, on the girls. Like what's the point basically? If we're not doing heavy makeup, like what's the point? And I realized that if I wanted to build my portfolio, I kind of had to switch up creative and how I was tackling these photo shoots. So after doing photo shoots with a makeup artist and hairstylist that were a little bit more natural, I started working with models on my own without a creative team. And that kind of put me back to square one, but having this new information from the agent really, really, truly helped me. And I think that was the base foundation for all my photo shoots to come. After getting the feedback from that agent, I started shooting a lot of the girls with little to no makeup, natural hair, no hair, no um, hairspray, no lipstick, nothing, just as they were. And I think that's where I started to really get it and start to really build my portfolio to where I could then uh, pitch it to agencies in LA. And that's exactly what I did. 
forgot to mention that during my freelance time, I met my friend Sarah. She came to one of my photo shoots. It was just like a photo shoot we did for fun. She was dressed so cute and we had gotten all these clothes for the model. Like she was just there like hanging out with us with, with one of her friends who was a hair, with a hairdresser for the photo shoot. And she was just super cute. So I asked her, I'm like, hey, like, can you kind of help pick out an outfit for this shoot? And she's like, sure. So she actually started like helping picking out outfits. And the more I worked with this hairdresser, the more that she came to the photo shoots and she actually started modeling for me and picking out her own outfits. And I was like, she picks out the best outfits. Like I love the way that she dresses. I was not fashionable by any means. So seeing someone like put together these, these really cool looks, I was like, wow, like I need her to help me pick out outfits for my photo shoots. So I worked with her a lot more and she wasn't a professional stylist by any means, but she, again, she was just a friend that dressed really well, but she eventually became so crucial to my photo shoots because she helped style them. She did hair, she did makeup. So we actually traveled to New York together and that's where some of my best photo shoots happened. We worked so much. We, we were there for like six days and we did, we worked with like three models a day. It was pretty crazy. Now that I look back on it, and again, Sarah was just a crucial part of that. Her styling really made the, the photo shoots w like what they were. So I definitely give it up to Sarah. Like finding somebody who you can trust as a stylist to bring your vision to life is so important. And it's definitely not easy to find a great stylist that fit, fits your aesthetics. And then ended up going to LA as well. Uh, the first trip I didn't go with Sarah, but second trip I went with her and again, same thing, we, we reached out to agencies and we shot with so many models from Next, Wilhelmina, Ford, and we, again, they were just so much fun. I loved every minute of it. It, it was a lot of work though, lots of editing, lots of networking, researching, planning. I had to plan all these photo shoots, the starting time, sending out call sheets, planning out outfits and the different looks for each model and getting, you know, just the entire day had to be planned from start to finish. So there was a lot of pre-planning involved definitely. Like weeks before I even went to LA, it was like just planning, emailing, coordinating, who's gonna be makeup for this person, who's gonna do the styling for this, uh, for this photo shoot. So definitely so much planning is involved. Like, I don't know, like 50 or 60% of it is just literally me planning on a computer sending emails. So that was a big part of it. It's important to note that I was rejected from agencies. Some of them didn't wanna work with me. There were models that didn't wanna work with me. Sometimes I was sent a package of girls with like two options and then sometimes the, like the timing didn't work out and I had models who canceled on me an hour before the photo shoot or makeup that couldn't make it that had to cancel. So it was just a lot of, again, coordin coordinating everything and you know, being on top of things, making calls, switching out, you know what I mean? There's just so much planning involved, more than you think when you're working with agency models. There are definitely different stipulations, I'll say, when working with agencies. I, I just try to find the, the agent that works best with me and I end up just cultivating a good relationship with them. And we both have trust in each other, so they send me a package of girls and they actually reach out to me sometimes and, and ask me if I'm in town and if I wanna work with a new girl who's in town. So that in itself is really helpful for you to have a good working relationship with these people. Definitely have a professional portfolio site that is super important. Have your Instagram updated you know, be, be a as active as you can in your photography and, so and social media. That's really all I got for you guys today. I feel like I talked for 50 years. Let me know if you have any additional questions in the comments. Maybe I'll make a, a part two. Maybe it'll be shorter than this video.